Hey guys, Dr. Davin Lim, Board Certified Dermatologist. Today we'll be talking about a very common condition called xanthalesma. Xanthalesma presents as yellow plaques, in other words, yellow areas, usually around the eye area. So it can affect the upper eyelid, the lower eyelid, and then usually bilateral. In other words, it affects both sides. Now xanthalesma can run in families, and xanthalesma is usually more common in adults. So most patients start with xanthalesma around the late 30s, and certainly that condition can increase in time. In other words, once you have established plaques of xanthalesma, the yellowish hue, that can increase in both size, as well as width, as well as the amount that you have. So you may start off with one or two dots, and over the years, you may have bigger areas, and in some cases, it can even be extensive, involving both the upper and lower eyelids. Now, in 25% of the cases, there is a history of high cholesterol. So if you have xanthalesma, it doesn't mean that you have high cholesterol, but in 25% of the cases, you may have high cholesterol. And hence, if you get them, you've got to see your family physician to make sure that your cholesterol levels are okay. Now, there are one or two antidotal reports in the literature saying, saying that by lowering your cholesterol, if you have predisposition of high cholesterol to begin with, it may result in resolution of xanthalesma. This is an exception rather than the rule. So if you are after a non-surgical solution or a non-laser solution, and if you do have high cholesterol, certainly decreasing the cholesterol may give some regression of your xanthalesma. Apart from decreasing the look of xanthalesma, importantly, by decreasing your cholesterol levels, you certainly decrease the amount of risk that you have for ischemic heart disease, strokes, diabetes, etc. So let your family physician guide you in regards to this. Now, as a dermatologist, we talk about several ways to remove xanthalesma. The most frequent way I use is basically using a laser. And I either use an erbium laser, which is my favorite, compared to something like a CO2. Now, with an erbium or CO2 laser, the procedure itself takes between 10 to 15 minutes. I usually sedate my patients because I'm working around the eye area, the laser procedure itself is painless because we use numbing cream, but on top of that, local injections to the area. And how a laser works is that it uses a beam. The target or chromophore is water, and what we do is we ablate it. So I'm there tracing out the lesion itself and going right down to the muscle layer, being very careful not to go past the muscle layer. If it is in the upper eyelid, I often use an internal eye shield. Lower eyelid, I don't usually use that. I use basically a wooden spatula or tongue depressor and protect the eye in that regard. Now the procedure itself, like I said, takes between 10 to 15 minutes. The healing up time, generally speaking, is between four days all the way up to one week. For broad-based xanthalesma, in other words, xanthalesma, which are very, very big, what I do, it's a two-step procedure. I treat the middle first, I wait for it to close, and then thereafter, when we have a, a smaller lesion that's more linear, the second procedure itself basically removes it. So the first way I remove it is with ablative lasers. Erbium is better than CO2, especially when you're da treating darker skin types. The second thing which, which I like doing is basically surgical removal. So if the xanthalesma itself, especially in the upper eyelid, lies in a crease, um, my treatment of choice is basically surgery because surgery, as compared with laser, has a higher clearance rate because we're clearing it um, in total. Uh, and the recurrence of it certainly is possible, but it's less with surgery. We can't remove all lesions with surgery, especially if the lesion itself is broad, because it may cause too much um, tightening of the eye area, and as a result might cause a pull down of the lid itself. So we talk about laser, we talk about surgery. Other treatments, TCGA can be applied using two mechanisms. First of all, you can use a bud, or preferably the flip side of a stick. The reason being is that we don't want to apply too much TCA to the area. The downside about TCA or trichloroacetic acid is between two to five treatments are needed, and they're usually spaced between four to eight weeks apart. So TCA, in the context of what I do, is my least favorite treatment. Um, there are other reports, including hyphricators. Uh, so you can use diatomy, you can also use something called radio frequency. I don't use that much because I believe that lasers are a little bit more accurate and cause less collateral damage compared to something like heat. Um, you can use something called an ND YAG laser. There are reports, especially in darker skin types. I don't use this vascular laser much because it's in the millisecond realm. I'd rather blight that. I'm very careful, especially in darker skin types. 
So guys, that summarizes management of xanthalesma. So the prognosis for this condition, given that there is a genetic background, in other words, an abnormal DNA, which is driving the predisposition for xanthalesma, is that it will probably recur. So most patients get between two all the way up to 10 years remission after removal. In some cases, complete removal is not possible due to the fact that the xanthalesma extends right down, and hence if we're chasing it, especially past the muscle layer, and that is not a safe or good idea. Guys, I hope you liked that video. It's about managing xanthalesma.